Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. We're trying to save your life here because we understand what's coming. Right, that's right. When you look at the coronavirus, when you look at the Trump acting crazy, when you see the wars that, that you keep hearing rumors about, you see nuclear bombs being built, y'all don't really understand what's going on because y'all not being taught that in your church. But we read this Bible and we're the watchmen, meaning we watch what's going on in society and we're here to warn you before the destruction comes. Right, that's right. And we don't want you to be destroyed. Most High Christ bless. Ha! Order, order, nation in order, my house in order. Who the prophets on the corner? What's that about? They say the Bible just for me, I gotta check it out. You scoffers ain't ready for me, I'm finna bring it out. My house is in order, my people, I can teach them now. Who the prophets on the corner? What's that about? They say the Bible just for me, I gotta check it out. You scoffers ain't ready for me, I'm finna bring it out. My house is in order, my people, I can teach them now. He leading captivity, shall go in captivity. They were back in the day, they were more likely for them to be more together than they were more broken up back then. Right. Right. Now, it stops. Now, the, the divorce rate is like in the 70s, 70% 70 or something like It's really high. People don't stay together long. Right. And it's because they're not getting to know each other the correct way. Right. They're putting sex before understanding. Right. I need to know you, Mariah. I need to know where you want to be when you grow up. I want to know your aspirations. I want to yes. know what you actually care about. Do you love God? I love God. What God do you love? Is he black? Is he white? Is he, what God is Christ? Christ? Because these kind of things may not seem important, but then when you get into a relationship, you start finding out the little things in a relationship is what breaks the relationship up. Right. Because if y'all don't get together and y'all don't know each other and y'all don't love each other, and y'all haven't learned each other, that's why these relationships fall apart. Right. And usually you rush it because she got pants on and you looking at her behind, so you just want to have sex with her. You're not really paying attention to her, her. So then when you have sex with her, then you get to know her. That's what happens in America. You have sex first, then you get to know the person. That's very rare in the society, but you know what that also brings? It brings a child up with a more, more stable mind. That's right. She, if her dad loves her and taught her she was beautiful, she not looking for love from every dude that walks down the block. But when her daddy ain't around and he never grew up with her, she don't understand her worth. So now she letting uh, the little Hispanic dude that walk around here with a blunt in his mouth driving around in the car thinking he cool. Now she in the, she in the car with him. Now he got a drug case, so now she with him. Like, like what the, how you getting this? How you get caught up with this fool? You can tell he ain't nothing. You can tell he ain't got nowhere going in his life. But you haven't been taught how to pick a man, and you haven't been taught how to carry yourself. And her father tells talks to her just right. like that. So, and, and that's what men do. <laughs> yes. And when men are in the house, they're going to make sure that their daughter is taken care of right. right. And they're going to look at that young boy that liked their daughter, and they're going to look at him like a suspect in a murder trial. And be like, look, you need to prove to me this is what you want and why you want it. What you here for? It's my baby. 
That's, you're not finna just defy my baby and have out on the street. Right. No, hell no. Men don't work like that. That's right. I don't care what kind of man he is. A man in the house, he ain't finna just let his daughter just be defiled and ran through. We don't That's roll right. like that. That's what's that? Sirach 42? Let's go there. It's in the Bible. Bring it out. That's how important it is to have your father in your life. And a lot of us don't have that. You have the opportunity. That's a beautiful thing. But now, y'all get to do it as understanding who y'all are, too. Lord's will. That's right. Your, your father listening to what y'all we saying, because I know y'all going to bring it back to him. Right. And he be like, dang, I didn't know that Dominican meant dog of God. I didn't know that I was from the <laughs> tribe of Simeon. Let me go look more into what they're talking about. <laughs> the book of Sirach, chapter 42 and verse 9. Bring it out. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. We always thinking about our daughters. You man, if you be thinking about something else, thinking about my daughter. Oh, I'm going think about my daughter. That's men, men. As soon as she born, we like, damn, she's gonna lose her virginity one day. How can I stop this? Right. <laughs> that's how we all, I'm sorry, that's just how it is. Men, when we have our daughter, our daughter is the most precious thing to us. That's so right. we not, we trying, trying to let nothing happen to her. We love yes. her to death, that's our first love. Yeah, well, that's, that's right. and you, uh, and you, your, your first love is usually your father, if he's in your household, if he's in your life, you usually love your daddy, read. And the care for her, take it away sleep. That's why we get jobs. To make sure that our kids take care of, especially our little girl. Three. When she is young, let she pass away the flower of her age. God said, You're supposed to watch over to make sure she don't lose her virginity. Not to no random dude while she's young. That ain't how God wanted to be done. Read. And being married, lest she should be hated. Why? Because she a hoe now. Everybody, and once, you know how it is. She loses her virginity, bunch from boy to boy to boy. Next thing you know, she gives that a certain age, she don't listen. It's like, right, trust me, it's best to get married and do it the right way. Right. That's what God is saying. Because you end up being hated and end up being in a, a divorce. Three. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. It used to be a shame for a girl to get pregnant in her dad's house. Right. To the back to the fact that back in the day. You used to send your daughter off somewhere to have the baby so you wouldn't embarrass the family. That's what black people used to do. Right. She'll go all the way, you have family somewhere else in the south, and then she'll go over there and then she'll have the baby. Right. And then she'll come back and that and now nobody knows she had this baby. And the baby will stay over there in the south and be raised by them. That's how it used to be. That's how much of a shame it is. You never want to get pregnant in your daddy's house. It's always been a shame. The man's supposed to be that's taking care of you, supposed to take care of you. He's supposed to move you into his house. Y'all supposed to get married before he moves you into his house. And he's supposed to raise up a family with you. Not go sneak into your parents' house, have sex with you, get you pregnant, or because y'all snuck off at the school and the parents was at work. Right. And then now you got a baby in your belly and he ain't got no house, you ain't got no house. Y'all both living with y'all parents. And now your parents got to be parents all over again. Nobody wants to do that. But that's what happens in the black and Hispanic families. Right. Because we're not teaching our women how to dress appropriately and how to love themselves and not allow any man to just have sex with them because he's cute and he tells them the right thing. And they also are not being taught how to dress appropriately to have the type of respect that they should have from a man. And it starts with the attire. People don't understand how important it is to dress appropriate. Right. Your breast should not be hanging out. I should not see your cleavage. I should not see your vagina. I should not see your behind. You save that for the man that you love. Right. Not for right. every Negro in the street. Right. Right. That's right. That's why these girls are doing what they're doing. And the women are at fault because they're not teaching them that. Because right. y'all were taught by y'all grandmas and somewhere down the line it was a broken communication. It was a breaking communication and now we're just letting these kids run wild. Now they on twerk, they twerking on on Instagram and right. doing all kind of stuff. Then you you like, oh my God, that's my daughter. Yeah, your daughter's online shaking her behind. On, not you, pray you never don't do that. <laughs> it, it, it is embarrassing. But this is what you're not learning because it's in the Bible. Right. Who's not teaching you the Bible the correct way? That's the question. Because this is news to y'all, but this is something y'all should have been raised with. Bring it out. That's why we out here to fix our communities. Right. Show you what you haven't been learning. And one of those things is the attire. Sister, I should not have to see you. Especially you got a man. How many times you get hollered at a day? Be honest. Too much. <laughs> why you think so? Why you think that? Because they looking at her behind. Hey, mommy. 
<laughs> you got a man? <laughs> That's my mama. Don't talk to my mama like that. And well, yes, she got a man. Mom. I know. But you wouldn't have that if you dressed a certain type of way. Right. That's the point we make it. This is how you respect yourself. You know what else is comfortable? Sin. But you know what else is not? You know what else? <laughs> Sin is comfortable until you die. That's right. Yes. And I'm going to tell you something. How is dresses not comfortable? Because I hear women say that all the time. Dresses are the most comfortable. You get the breeze down there so it ain't hot. It's loose fitting. You get to stretch and do everything you need to do. It ain't, it ain't obstructing at all. That's Men right. wear pants. We know how obstructing they are. So they ain't comfortable. They're not as comfortable as a dress. It's an excuse that you use because it's more, what's the word? Convenient. Right. Which I don't understand. You got to do this. Do all this with pants, but a woman with a dress, she just put the dress on. And oh, I, I really don't understand the mindset of why y'all think that dresses are less comfortable than pants. Unless you're wearing the ones that's so tight. But the dress is loose and it's flowing. I'm not saying wear the. I want dress. Don't wear the freakum dress from Beyonce that got your. your you see everything because then you you just is worse. Don't wear that dress. Wear the dress that's loose fitting. Right. That's right. What they call them, the summer dresses. Right. Summer right. dress season. It should be summer dress season all year round. Maxi dresses. Your husband loves you. He already know what you're working with. But if he buys. Because you told to him that, that you like him. Absolutely not. And I, and I beg him, no, I don't want to wear it. He still buys it. Okay, so we're going to go to this. First Peter's <laughs> This is the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, and verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. You. It's you that could be the one that could get him to change. I'm gonna show you game. Watch this game right here. You know, I kind of don't want to wear pants no more. Why? Because when I'm without you, too many men try to holler at me, and I'm tired of shutting them down. Bring it so out. So I want to. I'd rather wear a dress because everybody's looking at my ass. I hear all type of stuff. What you hearing this? They saying what? Yeah, yeah, man. Dudes coming at me all the time. It's getting on my nerves. They always trying to check out my ass. I'd rather wear dresses. Okay, baby, I can just wear dresses. It depends on how you bring the conversation. Because I guarantee you, you tell him something like that, he's going to be like, okay, let me get us some dresses. Because I don't want dudes talking at my wife all day long. Right. But you, your conversation is what's going to turn your man around. to Because he don't know better yet. Right. Or you can show him in the Bible, like, did you know in the Bible I'm not supposed to have pants on? I'm supposed right. to be wearing dresses? That's against God? I don't want to wear pants no more, Poppy. I want to wear I want to wear dresses now. Well, if he picks up the, the, the dress I don't want to wear. Then you go with him and pick out the dress with him. Y'all go shopping right. together. Right. Let me tell you something. What what is that? Uh, Ciroc 32 and 17. Yep, that's it. Go to Ciroc 32 and 17. I'm gonna show you something. We are Israel. We're wise. We're cunning. We think we always got one over on God, but we don't. Everything's in the Bible. Bring Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 32, and verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. So you are doing that right now. You keep trying to find excuses to keep wearing pants. Because you like pants. The sister is wrong. That's period. Right. And instead of trying to find excuses on why you can wear pants, why don't you start finding excuses on why you can wear a dress? Use that same energy to do right instead of using that energy to do wrong. Right. Because, I'm going to tell you something. We're trying to save your life here because we understand what's coming. Right. That's right. When you look at the coronavirus, when you look at the Trump acting crazy, when you see the wars that's, that you keep hearing rumors about, you see nuclear bombs being built, y'all don't really understand what's going on because y'all not being taught that in your churches. But we read this Bible and we're the watchmen. Meaning we watch what's going on in society and we're here to warn you before the destruction comes. Right. 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 And we don't want you to be destroyed. Have y'all ever seen Terminator 2? Either one of you ever seen Terminator 2? Seen who? Terminator 2 is the one I like. Somebody give me the uh, yeah, somebody give me the video. The Terminator 2, when she's sitting on the gate and the bomb comes. Oh, yeah. Terminator 2 judgment. Somebody give me that. I want y'all to see it. I usually don't do this, but I want y'all to see it. Because we understand what's coming, and a lot of y'all don't, so y'all are comfortable doing
doing what y'all want to do because y'all don't really believe that God is real. I hate to say it, like you you say you believe God is real, but if you believe God was real, you do stuff to know what He's because you don't you know it's coming. Right. God ain't coming with no hugs. God's coming with bombs, right. nuclear That's bombs right. to destroy right. this main place because this is the place of Satan's seat. God hates this place, but you've been taught that God loves this place because you've been taught that God's white. These are the lies that you've been taught. God's black, number one. Christ is black, and God hates this place because this place is against God in every way. Every law that God got, they find a way to go against. Right. They've taught you that the black man is trash and the white man is God. Right. When obviously, opposite is opposite. The black man is God and the white man is trash, whether y'all like it or not. And y'all are our brothers and sisters, and y'all supposed to love us, not be fighting against us and treating us like we mighty cones. Uh -oh. Yeah, I said it. They, they treat us like that. So, I'm using words I learned from, 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 from you know, whatever. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, and verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Okay, so... I want y'all look at this. This is in this is in Terminator. <laughs> this is the bomb dropping. And this is her being burned while she's standing up. These are the nuclear bombs hitting America. We always show this because this is like the this is like the G-rated version of how it's gonna be when these bombs drop. And we trying to save you from that because we love you. Why? Because you are our people, and our job is to save you so you won't have to endure that. Nobody wants to endure that. So let me show you that. Give me uh, Zechariah 14 and 12. Bring it out. I'm going to show you that, what you just saw in the Bible. That's right. where they got it from. And that's going to happen to this place. Uh, right. And you can stop that by just putting on a dress and wearing fringes. Right. Simple things can stop you from doing that. Read. The book of Zechariah, chapter 14, and verse 12. Bring it out. And the, as you were. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Because all these people, you're Jerusalem. We're Israelites, we're Jerusalem. Wherever we go, we are Jerusalem. Because right. Jerusalem is a people before it was a place. Right. Because we was in the wilderness dealing with God before we went into Israel and before we built the temple. Right. We are the we are Jerusalem. Right. So when he says all the people that went against Jerusalem, everybody that oppressed us, God is going to punish. That's right. Everybody that had us in slavery, everybody that's talked bad about us, everybody that stole our land, Bring it out. anything wrong to us, they're That's going right. to be punished by That's God right. because we're God's chosen people right. and they should have never touched us. Right. That's right. That's how God, that's how pissed God is. He's just waiting. This is all time. Because right. he wants, what he's doing is he wants them to do enough to where they can't deny what they've done. Right. It's going to be so much. Everybody's going to be like, no, you did do that. No, you did that. You did that. You did that. You did that. So when you get destroyed, can't nobody say, God, you evil. God, you evil. They're like, no, no. Yeah, they got what they deserve. Because they kept doing this to us. Bring it up. Read. They have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away. Just like you saw her holding on to that fence. Read. While they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes. I mean, you're going right. to be standing up, and your eyes going to melt <laughs> while you're standing up. Right. Your skin going to melt while you're standing up. Because you saw how that blast hit? That blast is going to be like the temperature of lava. And it's going to come and sweep through the hole. It's going to melt everything. Right. You're going to be turning into dust. That's you, right. saw how, you saw how those people was look like ash? That's what happened to Lot's wife. Then when he told Lot's wife not to look back, and she got turned into a pillar of salt, that's what that happened. That's how it's going to be here. Right. Except you ain't going to have no choice to just turn away. No, you're going to be destroyed. Because it's the punishment of Babylon. And we're trying to get you out of that because you're in a Babylonian mindset. You think it's okay to wear pants because the white man told you it was okay to wear pants. Right. But you never wore pants with none in history until the 70s. Right. Because it's always been against God. 
So you got to come back to God. You got to get your husband to understand. You got to come back to God. I don't want you to die. I want us to go into the kingdom of God, live forever together. Right. His mama still don't wear pants. Bless his mother. And, and, and her mother is still alive, so his grandmother, they don't wear pants. And you can, and and you can be, that can be an example. We have actually bought the pants and they won't wear them. All praise. <laughs> Wise women. <laughs> And that's just one of the little things, but I'm gonna tell you something. They have to cook their own, you know, they have to get their own food. It's showing you, our people like handouts. Right. So what does America do? Give our people handouts. <laughs> Let's give these Negroes welfare. Because these Negroes always love welfare. Look, in the Bible, it says right here, they love welfare. Give them welfare, give them free housing, as long as the man ain't in the house. So they'll take that. So these are the kind of things that they use. They look at our weaknesses and they say, you know what? We're going to keep them in sin. They like pants, give them pants. They like welfare, give them welfare. Uh, uh, they like guns and violence, give them that. Give them drugs, give them all that to keep them down. We know their weaknesses. We're going to use the Bible to exploit their weaknesses. But we here to exploit your strengths and bring you back to God. Because we're going to stop this before we be destroyed. And we don't want you or your daughter or your husband to be destroyed, sis. So we want you to repent. We want you to get out of that mind frame of it's okay that just pants. It's not okay. Did we already go to that? Punish the King's Men? We, did we finish that one? Zephaniah 1 Zephaniah 1 and 8. Let's go back to that. Because we think that's some minor. It's just close. It's not just minor to God. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 8. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Strange apparel, apparel against the Bible. Against what God said, you're gonna get punished. How you gonna get punished? Those bombs, he gonna leave you here. The rapture you've been hearing about is real. Those, like, watch this, Revelation 11. Break it out. The rapture's real, but it's only for the Israelites. Right. It's only for the blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans that's gonna be saved before the bombs drop. Right. That's right. They're not just gonna randomly be snatched up in, in the movies you see, like, why did they leave? No, they leaving because they're gonna see bombs coming. They're gonna be screaming and shouting, crying. And the ones that are keeping God's commandments, he gonna save those and the rest gonna die. That's right. And we don't want you to be the rest. Right. Read. That's right. Revelation 11. More 11 and 11. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. Bring it out. And after three days and a half. After 350 years of slavery, read. The spirit of life from God enter. That's now, that's what you're seeing now. After 350 years of slavery, that's been over with, that ended. Now you're seeing us wake up and teach our people again. Read. Entered into them, and they stood upon them. Go to verse eight to show you that I'm talking about this time now. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse eight. Bring it out. And their dead bodies shall be in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. The great city is America. Sodom and Egypt. That's why it's called that. What is Sodom? Anybody know what the word Sodom means? Anybody know about Sodom and Gomorrah? Oh yeah. So what happened? What was they doing in Sodom and Gomorrah? They tried to rape the angels. They were homosexual. That's right. So God said this place, and Lot had to leave. God said this place is is Sodom because they're going to push homosexual laws. The one place he's talking about in the Bible, he says it's going to be a mixed multitude of people. They're going to be pushing homosexual laws. And what does it say, Sodom and what? It shall be in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Because Egypt, because what happened in Egypt to the Israelites? You know? Well, Moses, remember Moses came to do what in Egypt? Save the people? Let my people go. We was in slavery in Egypt. Right. 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 Moses came and saved us out of Egypt because we was in slavery there. Where else was we in slavery at? Here. God is showing you that this place is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. It's, pushed, it's the land of homosexuality and it's the land of our slavery.
I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's sound man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.